I seem to have a knack for finding the taxis in which the drivers are dozing. I say this because this has happened to me on four occasions in three continents. The most recent one that happened was actually in Turkey, in Istanbul. I was going to the airport, and as I was going, the car started to slow down, go a little bit on the side. And I've been there before. This has happened to me. So I did what I normally do. I started talking a little louder, uh, even though there was zero comprehension. I was a bit animated, and then the driver woke up, and I saw he was dozing, but he looked back and nodded. A nod, which as a professor I've seen very often in my classrooms, a student who is napping and suddenly wakes up and like, I, I'm awake, I was just thinking <laughs> that nap. Uh, it was okay, I, I reached the airport okay, uh, everything was fine, and I thought about it. Why four times? Why in three continents? And there was, of course, the first obvious conclusion, I must be the most boring passenger to be picked up from the hotel to the airport. But there's probably a second conclusion that emerged, and that was, no matter where we were, which country I was in, when you have people, very different people, immersed into similar situation, they all tend to react similarly. In other words, there is some similarity, there's a pattern. And that interests me. I'm a climatologist, I study climate. I study what happens to climate across the globe. I study what happens to cities when there's climate change. I study how cities change climate. I study how people behave in different cities and they create their own climate. I've been doing this for over 10 years. And when I look across, one of the things that strikes to me is no matter how different things are, eventually, they beautifully fall into some similarity pattern. They are similar. And this is something that I have started to see in a theme that starts emerging, and that is something that has started to look around for me. So one of the conclusions that I've started to come up with is what we have been looking for is finding these similarities amidst apparent differences. Finding the simplicity amidst complexity, if you wish. And of course, there's a corollary to that, which is finding these differences amongst things which should be similar, because the point is, they are part of the same system. Things have to be a little different to be similar. Let me explain what I mean by the last sentence. I'm an Indian, I come from India. I've been in the US for more than 20 years, so I'm also an American now. I traveled to India and the Indian subcontinent on a number of familial, research, socioeconomic interactions and visits. And every time I do that, it's amazing to find how different this place is, every time. Every place I visit within India, I start thinking, this is like a new place. This is different. And there's a reason for that. Let me, let me bring you an update on what India is. So India has about 29 states, roughly about 1.3 billion people, give or take 100 here and there every other day. You have about more than 300 languages and more than 1,500 dialects. So the point is, the chances are that in about 100 kilometers or 100 miles, you are going from one place to another, you're probably going to find people who look different, who talk a different language, who eat different food. Even the signs on the roads, you can't understand because they're in a different script. And for all practical purposes, you're like in a different country. And this happens routinely. And it's not just places, it's also the time. If you go there before the monsoons, it's like a different country. You go there after the monsoons, it's a different country. And every time it looks different. So you look around and you start seeing the stark differences where you have people going in different modes of transportation, people leaving by the coast, people going in different ways, different geography, different people. 
And yet I know these are not different people. These are my people. This is my land. These are the people who are always excited by a game of cricket, who have the shoulder dance when they hear a Bollywood dance song. And they do this yes and no every time you talk to them. Yes, they're my people. I do that. And yet I know, I'm thinking apparently this is different. And then I start thinking, why does this not look different to me when even apparently this is different? And the point that comes across to me is that what I'm missing is these are familiar people and hence they don't look different to me. And so I conclude that the more one becomes familiar with something, the less different it becomes to us. So familiarity with some things which apparently looks different really becomes a factor in taking away the differences that we have. And that's something I've really started to look around. We start looking at it in terms of the ways we analyze people, patterns, things, everything around us. And we start looking for it. And the more you apply this lens, that things are similar, you will start finding the similarity. You just need that lens at one point. I had this example about how things become different and familiarity issue. I was in Paris over the summer, and I went to UNESCO. <coughs> now, UNESCO building is arguably one of the best locations where you might have the best view of the iconic uh, tower the Eiffel Tower, of course. The Eiffel Tower stands out no matter where you are. It stands out in terms of uniqueness that it is. And so the first time I go to the UNESCO building, I actually almost walk in literally backwards through the security, keeping my eyes looking at the Eiffel Tower. I'm amazed. I spend there four days working on different things, and on the fourth day, I'm actually leaving, my host comes up to me and says, would you like to take a picture? And I, I'm not sure what he's talking about. And then it strikes me, oh yes, the Eiffel Tower. It had become something that I'd become oblivious to because I'd become familiar with the thing. So something which is supposed to be so different, something which is supposed to stand out, had become part of my familiar landscape just because I'd become familiar with it. It was no longer different. So this is a real powerful message for me that came across, and I was thinking about it, why it happened. On my way back to the airport, and this time in the metro, not a taxi, uh, I actually thought more about this, that can we start seeing these patterns where we are seeing the similarity? And indeed, if you start looking at data sets, if you start looking at people, if you start looking at cities, you start seeing this pattern of similarity almost everywhere. You see it in people, you see it in cities, you see it in roads, you see it in the manner in which weather forms over cities, you see it in storms that come over cities, you see it in people and how they respond to certain instances. So the similarity is really a factor that just starts immersing and emerging itself no matter where you start looking for it. So if you just let go the lens of the differences after a while, Similarity is just a trait that starts emerging itself everywhere. So familiarity, I believe, leads to this notion of similarity, and that leads to the erosion of our differences. So the, if we just let ourselves become familiar with something, the differences are just going to evaporate in a matter of time. They're going to fall onto something very simple. That's a theme that we start emerging with. So we have really been convinced and we have started to look at this issue about how similar things are. So in my own personal and research life, I have students who come and start working with very different topics. There are things we know, and there are things we are not familiar with. And then with a short amount of time, everything starts falling into this beautiful pattern where things are similar. We know the processes, we know the ideas, we know the solutions. So it's generally not different at all. And as a result of that, you start seeing things that the research over India becomes important for the farmers in Indiana, and the storms over Indianapolis become important in designing the systems in Beijing. So everything starts becoming interconnected. 
So this similarity is really something that has helped us look at many things from science and so forth. I want to highlight one thing, though. When you're looking at similarity, that does not mean blindness. It does not mean being blind to things. It does not mean being obtuse about things. It actually means being aware. It means being knowledgeable. It means oneness and consciousness. And once you have that, then you can see the differences. You can still appreciate the differences, but you know it's similar. So when I go to a new city, I'm still awed by its beauty. I'm taken in by the energy there is there. I see how it breathes. I see how it grows. I'm amazed by it. And then I'll run it by the filter where I know the more familiar I'm going to get with it, it's going to start falling into the similarity issue that comes through. And that helps me connect, be part of it, and know it is a part of what I know and live by. And that's where I go. So of course, where science continues to explore, art has already found its solution. And no one has said it more beautifully than Maya Angelou. And you heard that, that we are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. And this universality of similarity is not just within people. If we just allow ourselves to look a little bit deeper beyond that initial impression of apparent differences. We see this in almost everything that we have created as a human system. Cities, even the things that we are affected by and that we don't create at times, like weather and roads and so forth, everything starts becoming similar if we just let it pass through one filter. So I end up by saying that similarity, like a human emotion, is truly a universal trend.